Hey guys, welcome back. Recently we've been talking a lot about Flood Law because who the hell doesn't love the Flood? And we've also been talking a lot about some of the shady doings of the Office of Naval Intelligence. But today, today, we are looking at a truly terrifying piece of Halo lore that combines the darkest side of both Oni and the Flood. And what happens when the outcome of this lethal concoction gets out of control. So, sometime after the Master Chief destroyed Alpha Halo, an Oni Prowler, the UNSC Red Horse, was sent on a top secret mission to the destroyed remnants of the Ring. The Prowler was manned by Commander Tobias Foucault, Smart AI Rebecca, and a number of Marines, led by one Sergeant Lopez. When the crew arrived at the higher than top secret coordinates, they stumbled upon a life pod containing the barely living mangled body of a prisoner, who revealed he'd come from the Mona Lisa, a freighter turned prison ship, used for transporting prisoners across the galaxy. Spurting out blood in his dying breath, he revealed that he was happy that he was dying on board the Red Horse, and not on the Mona Lisa, because it meant that he wouldn't come back. Following this ordeal, the Commander's top secret orders mysteriously updated to include assessing the status of the Mona Lisa, and if compromised beyond retrieval, destroy, and Lopez and her marines were ordered to carry out the mission. From the moment they set foot in the Mona Lisa, things were already weird. They encountered a group of naked, unarmed elites who didn't attack, but instead just told the marines to be quiet. One of the marines then went missing, and Lopez ordered a few marines to guard the pelican while she searched for her. Lopez found the missing marine having her chest stamped on by an elite, but upon closer inspection of the body, she found an odd growth inside of it, almost like a tentacle. During the inspection, what she believed to be more elites ran past her towards the pelican, and when she radioed back to the squad there to warn them, they were attacked by whatever ran past her, and given their agonizing screams, it most definitely was not the Covenant. Burgundy, the pilot who'd stayed inside the Pelican, scanned the area on the ship's cams to find that all the Marines had vanished, leaving nothing but an assault rifle and empty casings, and the dead elite was being dragged away by something into the darkness. Something was clearly awry, and after radioing back to the Red Horse, their orders were now to initiate the call protocol and wipe the ship of any navigational data before destroying it. With these updated orders, the Marines split into two groups, one to carry out each objective, but as Lopez's group left, she realized that yet another Marine had mysteriously just gone missing. However, as her team made its way to erase the nav data, Lopez and the Marines would learn of a terrifying revelation. In the medical bay, they discovered a panic room sealed tightly shut. When they opened it, they found who they believed to be the ship's medical officer, Dr. John Smith. He said there'd been a prison break and that the prisoners had managed to take over the ship, but Lopez wasn't having it, considering they were yet to encounter a single human other than this mysterious doctor on board. Reluctantly, they took Smith with them to the bridge, but when they got there, they found yet another mangled human body, the room drenched with blood, but this time, the body had a weird mutated hand, almost rotten. To try and explain it, Smith came up with yet another story, this time saying that the Covenant prisoners they brought on board had a virus that they were testing that had managed to spread to humans. For the time being, Lopez bought it, until they encountered even more of the grotesque creatures, following which she demanded to know the truth. She ordered Mahmood, one of her fellow marines, to search Dr. Smith, and what he found made everything make perfect sense. He found Smith's only ID card, revealing that he was not a doctor, in fact a major working in research and development for Oni Section 3, the most secretive division of Oni, responsible for the Orion Project, Spartan 2 and Spartan 3 programs, Black Ops missions, and most importantly, for creating innovations using alien technology. This forced Major Smith into revealing the truth behind the Mona Lisa's orders, and behind what went down on the ship. What they were dealing with wasn't a virus, rather an infestation, known as the Flood. Hosts infected by the Flood don't register pain, and they don't require all body parts to function, and are seemingly only fueled by a primordial rage. 
He revealed that on the ship he was carrying out R&D for Oni, which would enable the UNSC to use the Covenant's supposed immunity to plasma radiation against them. But he also had intent to carry out tests on the Flood, and the Mona Lisa, a prison ship that harboured some of the worst criminals known to mankind, acted as the perfect testing bed. Major Smith had come on board the Mona Lisa and used his only authority to take command of it. He then ferried Covenant prisoners on board, and before even the prisoners or the crew of the ship knew what was going on, he made a slipstream jump to their current location, the highly classified coordinates of Alpha Halo. Assumingly, they then went down to the ring and gathered a test subject from it, an infected elite, which initially proved useful for Major Smith's studies, but only to an extent. Only wanted to find out how this infestation worked, how it spread, and only one host wasn't enough. Hence the acquisition of a ship that was full of people who could disappear without anybody realising. Prisoners then began to report cellmates being taken away by Oni agents and never returning. Under Oni directives, the human experimentation with the Flood had officially begun. Their goal was to find a way to weaponize it, turn hosts into mindless zombie soldiers to send into battle against the Covenant, the ultimate biological weapon. But clearly, somewhere down the line, it had all gone majorly wrong. It was believed that at some point, some of the elite prisoners had managed to break out of their cells and accidentally release the flood, causing an outbreak in which they consumed the crew and a large majority of prisoners on board. It was later believed that Major Smith had in fact exceeded his only orders, but knowing how secretive only Section 3 can be, this was likely just another instance of them covering up their tracks and planning to use Major Smith as a scapegoat in case any of this got out to the public. While the rest of the Marines continued to fulfil the call protocol, Major Smith had managed to sneak away, find a life pod, and was on his way to the Red Horse, to safety. In doing so, he'd drawn the attention of a nearby Covenant capital ship, giving the Marines still on board the Mona Lisa 10 minutes to get to one of the two remaining life pods before the Red Horse launched a Shiva tactical nuke at the prison ship, destroying anything and everything on board. Ultimately, Major Smith would be court-martialed and tried for war crimes, and McCraw, one of the Marines, the rookie of the Marines, stole one of the remaining life pods, leaving only one left. This left the last two survivors aboard the Mona Lisa, Sergeant Lopez and Henry the Friendly Elite, to fight for the final pod, although their fate remains unknown. And that is the horrifying story of the Mona Lisa. In the end, the ship and all memory of it was obliterated by a Shiva nuke, but for the few who knew of it, nightmares of this repurposed prison ship will likely stay with them forever. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've been asked for probably over a year now to make a video about the Mona Lisa, and I never really found a way to do it in a way that I felt sort of comfortable with. I didn't want to just retell the story, but seeing as we've covered so much Oni lore recently, and also so much Flood lore, this honestly just felt like the perfect collaboration of two of the most interesting aspects of Halo lore. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to give a big thank you to all of my patrons for the continued support. Ardent, Tomahawk, Evan, Momo, Shikata, Mjolnir, Matthew, Pierre, Tony, Jim, Zach, Jack Madden, Eric Brown, Sam Grafton, Bruin98, Hayden Woods, and Gareth Davies. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one.